uh, study is trying versus trusting. We're going to finish uh, Galatians chapter 3, verses 15 through 29. But before we go to verse 15, we're going to, go, we're going to back up a little bit so we can get the full understanding of what is being talked about here and what the Apostle Paul is teaching us through the Spirit of God. So the question is, do you receive God's promise of righteousness by trying to obey the law or through trusting in Jesus? That's the question. I ask you again, verse 5, I ask you again, does God give you the Holy Spirit and work miracles among you because you obey the law? Of course not. It is because you believe the message you heard about Christ. In the same way, Abraham believed God, and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. The real children of Abraham, then, are those who put their faith in God. What's more, the scriptures look forward to this time when God would declare the Gentiles to be righteous through their faith. God promised this good news to Abraham long ago when he said, All nations will be blessed through you. So all who put their faith in Christ share the same blessing Abraham received because of his faith. Okay, the first thing I want us to really see in here, and I know I talked about this last week, but I want this is the foundation of this whole passage of Scripture that we're going to finish reading today. God counted Abraham righteous because of what? Why did he count Abraham righteous? Verse 6. Faith. Because of his faith. Okay. Verse 9, so all who put their faith in Jesus or in Christ shared the same blessing Abraham received because of his faith. What was the blessing Abraham received because of his faith? Righteousness. Okay, now let's go back up here. I ask you again, does God give you the Holy Spirit and work miracles among you because you obey the law? Of course not. It is because you believe the message you heard about Christ. It's because, what's the message we heard about Christ? That he made us righteous through faith. That was the message right here. I mean, so that we can just clearly see this. Verse 8. What's more, the scriptures look forward to this time when God would declare the Gentiles to be righteous because of their faith. God proclaimed this good news to Abraham long ago when he said, all nations will be blessed through you. So when, when God said to Abraham, all nations will be blessed through you, he's saying all people, Jews, Gentiles, all nationalities are going to be blessed through you, which is Jesus that was going to come through the seed of Abraham and all who put their faith in him would be made righteous. God declared this and promised this way before the law was ever given. That's right. Before the law was ever written or thought of, God made this promise to Abraham that all nations, every person who placed their faith in Jesus would be declared right. righteous. Okay, now I've had this definition of righteousness in, our, in your notes for the last few weeks, but today we're going to dissect it just a little bit so we can really understand what does this mean that we've been declared righteous. God promised that he would make you righteous, not by anything that you did. Does the, did he give you the Holy Spirit? Does he work miracles among you because you obey the law? Of course not. It's because you believe the message that you've been made righteous through Jesus. That's why he works miracles among you. That's why he gave you the Holy Spirit, because you believed that Jesus died for your sins to make you righteous. You know, last week I went over this a little bit because I, I wanted you to, again, to get a clear understanding of what... Does God give you the Holy Spirit and work miracles among you? We could say, does God give you a hope and a future and prosper you because you obey the law? Of course not. It's because you believe that he made you righteous in Jesus. 
Does God bless your children and bring to pass his purpose and plan for their life because you've been a perfect parent? Of course not. <laughs> it's because you believe the message that you've been made righteous through faith in Jesus. Does God bless your finances and meet all of your needs because you obey the law? Of course not. It's because you believe the message that you've been made righteous through faith in Jesus. I'm going to say it again. Does God bless your finances because you've been a perfect steward and you've done everything right? Certainly not. Of course not. <laughs> it's because you believed the message you heard about Christ. What's the message you heard about Christ? That he made you righteous when you put your faith in him. Does he deliver you from all your trouble, even the trouble that you made? Yeah. Amen. You know, sometimes we have trouble that we didn't make, and sometimes we have trouble that we did. Amen. Does he deliver you from the trouble that you made because you've done everything right? Of course not. He delivers you from all your trouble, whether you made the trouble or whether you didn't make the trouble, because you believe the message you heard about Christ. Amen. What's the message you heard about Christ? Amen. That he made you righteous when you placed your faith in him. Amen. Isn't that good? Yeah. The freedom and the peace that comes when you realize God is not going to answer my prayers <laughs> and move powerfully in my life and, and bring salvation and restoration to my family because I've done everything right. I don't have to think that way anymore. I don't have to think that, what have I done wrong? I don't have to think, what do I need to do right? I don't have to think that way anymore. God moves powerfully in our lives. He answers our prayers. He brings to pass the desires of our hearts. He fulfills our dreams because we believe the message we heard about Christ. What's the message? He made you righteous through your faith in Jesus. That's why. So what does it mean? What is the promise of righteousness? That is the promise. This is the promise of God. This is the promise of God that covers all the promises of God. This is the promise of God that qualifies you for all the blessings of God. When you have this promise, you're qualified for every promise, for every blessing. You only need this one promise. Amen. That you've been made righteous. Amen. What does it mean? What is the promise of righteousness? Righteousness means innocent, free from all guilt or blame, justified. It is the judicial act of God by which he pardons all of your sins yes. because you believe in Jesus, because you believe in Christ. And he accounts, accepts, and treats you yes. as righteous in the eye of the law. Amen. In addition to the pardon of your sin, justification declares that all the claims of the law are satisfied. The law is not relaxed or set aside but it is declared to be fulfilled in the strictest sense. So you who have been declared justified are entitled yes. to all the advantages yes. and rewards arising from perfect obedience to the law. Amen. It proceeds on the crediting to you, the yes. believer, by God himself, yes. the perfect righteousness of Jesus. Wow. He's credited to you. He's given you a nature that is the perfect righteousness of Jesus. Amen. Justification is not the forgiveness of a man without righteousness. It's not just that your sins have been forgiven, but it's something, it's something more than that. Your whole nature has been changed. Amen. Who you are has been completely changed. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. You are righteous in him. 
So justification is not the forgiveness of a man without righteousness, but a declaration by God himself that he possesses a righteousness which perfectly and forever satisfies the law, namely Christ's righteousness. So when God promised to make you righteous, when God said, Nancy, I promise to make you righteous through my son Jesus, that was his promise. All nations will be blessed through their faith in my son Jesus. Because when they place their faith in my son Jesus, I will declare them righteous. Okay? And when he said that, he said, I will declare them innocent. That's God's promise to you. Forever, every day of your life, regardless of your good works, regardless of your mistakes, he has promised. Yes. This is a God that does not lie. That's right. He has promised to declare you innocent. Amen. Not because you are innocent, not because you have done, you know, not because you've kept the law perfectly. You're innocent because you have done everything right. No, you're innocent because you believed the message about Jesus. We're going to get, I'm, I'm re, you, the, the, come on, come on, <laughs> we got you. I know I've said this before, and if I have to hear it again, so do you. That's right. <laughs> when God promised to make you righteous, this is the promise of all promises, <laughs> the promise of God, he promised that you would be free from all guilt and blame from all your mistakes. Past mistakes, present mistakes, future mistakes. He promised that you no longer had to live in shame or guilt or blame. Amen. You were free from it. Can you imagine if you really believed the promise of God? You're free from all blame. All blame. Have you ever blamed yourself for something? Yes. Blamed yourself, okay, again, blamed yourself for your children's mistakes. Blamed yourself for your financial mess. Blamed yourself because... You're sick, and you should have taken better care of yourself. <laughs> Bla- you know what I'm saying? The promises of, of God is that you're free from all blame. Amen. Amen. I know this is too good to be true, <laughs> but I am only telling you what the Bible says. I'm not making this up. I'm telling you something that is so powerful and freeing that if we would just believe that the sacrifice that Jesus made really did make us righteous, we would live free in this world. Amen. We would live free from fear. We would live free from shame. We would live free from condemnation. We would live free from comparing ourselves to each other. We would live free from jealousy. We would live free. We would live free Amen. if we just believed and received the one promise that God's given us, that you're innocent, that you're free from all blame. You're free from all guilt and all shame. What does it mean that God has promised to make us righteous? You are justified. All your sins are pardoned, and God accepts and treats you as righteous in the eye of the law. He looks at the law in the eye of the law, and he says you're righteous. In the eye of the law, he declares you're righteous, even though you haven't kept it all, even though you haven't obeyed it all perfectly. He, He accepts and treats you as though you have. Yes. Amen. That's his promise. Yes. All the demands the law put on you are completely satisfied and fulfilled in Jesus. When the law said you have to do this, this, and this, and this for God to bless you, God says all of those, this, this, and have been satisfied. That's right. When you placed your faith in Jesus, mm-hmm. all the steps that you had to do to earn the blessing of God were satisfied. Yes. Forever. Amen. <laughs> you are declared by God himself to be, com- to be entitled to all the rewards arising from perfect obedience to the law. Come on. See, last week we talked about Deuteronomy chapter 28 mm-hmm. and the blessings that came on the one who was blessed. Who's the one that's blessed? The one who's been declared righteous. righteous. And this one says that God, you are declared by God himself 
to be entitled to all the blessings, all the rewards arising as though you perfectly obeyed the law. So like Deuteronomy chapter 28, it's Jesus' perfect obedience. It's Jesus' perfect righteousness that you can embrace and receive that I'm blessed coming in, I'm blessed going out. I, God commands his blessing upon you. Why? Because you've obeyed the law? No, of course not. It's because you believed the message that you've been made righteous through faith in Jesus. God himself credits you with the perfect righteousness of Jesus. When the Father looks at you, he sees perfect righteousness. He sees perfectness. I know that's hard to believe, but we just accept it because God said it. It's like a child. I don't understand that. I know I don't do everything right all the time. I know I mess up sometimes. But when the Father looks at me, he promised, Connie, he promised you that when he looks at you, he sees the perfect righteousness of Jesus. That's his promise. really touching my heart. I think I've cried every week I've taught this lesson. God declares that you possess the righteousness that perfectly and forever satisfies the law. Did you see that? Perfectly and forever. Sometimes when we accept Jesus as our Savior, we think, okay, our sins are forgiven and, and he sees me as righteous because I just accepted Jesus, but tomorrow when I mess up, he doesn't see me righteous anymore. Yeah. That's not true. Amen. It says that he, God declares you that you possess a righteousness that perfectly and forever satisfies the law. You're no longer defined by the law anymore. Amen. You're defined by the declaration, the promise of God to give you the perfect righteousness of Jesus. You are qualified for all of God's blessings, not because of you trying to obey the law, but because of your trust in Jesus. Amen. Now listen to this. Relationship, trusting Jesus and his promise of righteousness. Verse 9. So then those who are people of faith. Okay. Who are the people of faith? The ones who believe the message they heard about Jesus. What's the message? I'm going to say, when you finish listening to this teaching, you're going to know what the message that you heard about Jesus is. Amen. That you've been made righteous, perfect, innocent in the Father's eyes. People who believe that, people who live by, by what Jesus believes about them, are blessed and made happy and favored by God Amen. as partners in fellowship with the, ble the believing and trusting Abraham. I'm telling you what, this week when I was studying, going back over these verses again, that made happy just jumped right out at me. <laughs> who is made happy? Who, who lives in this world filled with happiness and joy? Those who believe the message they heard about Jesus. Those who truly accept the promise that they have been made innocent, free from all blame and guilt, that they are qualified for all the blessings of God, that God himself has declared you perfectly righteous in the eye of the law. That's the ones who are happy. That is true. If we are not feeling the joy of the Lord, the happiness that God wants us to live in, 
Jesus came that we might enjoy life and have it in abundance. Amen. How do we experience this enjoying life and having it in abundance? We believe the message we heard about Jesus, yes. that he made us innocent, yes. that he made us qualified, yes. that he made us perfectly righteous, yes. and that he works all things together for our good, Amen. not because we've obeyed the law, yes. but because we believe the message we heard about Jesus. Amen. Those who are people of faith are blessed, made happy, and favored by God. But listen to this other side. Religious law is trying to be made righteous through your obedience to the law. Verse 10. All who depend on the law, who are seeking to be justified by obedience to the law, are under a curse. What's that curse? Condemnation. We learned that last week. If you weren't here, what a wonderful message to listen to. All who depend on the law, who are seeking to be justified by obedience to the law, are under a curse and doomed to disappointment. You know what this tells me? This tells me that if you're a Christian, if you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, but you're still trying to be made righteous through your obedience, through your good works, then you can live in condemnation and live a life of disappointment. Even though you've accepted Jesus as your Savior because you're still depending on your obedience to the law to get God to move for you. You're still, uh, let's just use parenting as an example. It's such a great example. As a matter of fact, I was just talking with somebody about this the other day. You know, our children sometimes do things they shouldn't do. Sometimes they act in ways they shouldn't act. And what we tend to do as a parent is go, what have I done wrong? What have I done wrong to, that they're acting this way or that they believe this way? Or, or, or you know, but the problem is, is if, if you're going to take the cre credit for their bad behavior, then you're taking the credit for their good. Well, if they do good, then, ha, oh, ha, ha, look at me, I'm such a great parent. <laughs> If they do bad, then, oh, 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 look at me. I'm such a miserable parent, right? right? But when we look to Jesus, it's because of Jesus that our children, that God's going to work everything out together for their good, even their mistakes, even their mess-ups. He's going to work them out for their good, too, yeah. right? We have a tendency to look at ourselves in any situation, in any negative situation that we face. The, the, the temptation, the lie is going to come. You've done something wrong to deserve this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You should have done it better. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to have this big mess to have to deal with. Mm -hmm. Does God move powerfully in your life and clean up your messes? Mm -hmm. Because you've done it all right? You've done it all perfect? Is there any perfect parent? No. There was only one, and his children messed up too. <laughs> so come on that's what I was thinking the other day I was like father you were the perfect parent you did everything right and your children sometimes are really messed up so let that be freedom to you let that be freedom to you okay no it's not because you've done everything right it's not because you've messed up it's because you believe that you're righteous, that God is going to work in our lives. Amen. Whether we make mistakes, whether we do things right, he's going to work in our lives and help us reflect Amen. his glory in our lives because we believe that we've been made righteous through Jesus and not because of what we do. Amen? Amen. Amen. I remember one time talking to the Lord about a mistake one of my children made, and I was just ranting and raving, you know, just like, Father, I can't believe this. I trusted you. I trusted you. Why is he making this stupid decision, you know? I, I heard the Lord say to me so clearly, he just said, Connie, I never promised you that your children wouldn't make a bad, you know, make a bad decision. I never promised you that. And I'm like, well, I guess that's true, Lord. He said, but I did say that I would work all things together Amen. for their good. Yes. That's what I said. Yes. And if you will believe, 
you will trust me that I made you righteous, that you're qualified for me to work in this situation, mm -hmm. I will turn ashes into beauty, mm -hmm. sorrow into joy, mm -hmm. despair into songs of praise. Amen. 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 So no matter what we're looking at, yeah. whether it has to do with your children, your finances, your health, relationships, a business, all we have to remember is, Jesus, you made me righteous. You qualified me to work powerfully on my behalf. Amen. And the only way you're going to be disappointed or condemned is if you trust in your ability to do it all right. Awake to righteousness. You are qualified, innocent, forgiven, accepted, approved, and loved. Join Connie Witter as the journey through the Book of Romans continues in Awake to Righteousness Volume 2 and be empowered by grace to live a righteous life. Available now, Awake to Righteousness Volumes 1 and 2. Also available as a group Bible study package. Call 918-994-6500 or visit ConnieWitter.com to order or download your copy today. Because of Jesus Ministries introduces our first children's storybook, Are You a Chicken Head? by Connie Witter. This fun little book asks the big life question, what's true about you? Mommy, that girl called me a chicken head. Is that true, Victoria? Are you a chicken head? What does Jesus say about you? For many years, I have shared this true story to encourage others to believe what Jesus says about them. I pray this book will inspire parents, grandparents, and children alike to confidently respond. I believe what Jesus says about me. Order this delightful book today. Call 918-994-6500 or go online at becauseofjesus.com where Bible studies are always in the light of Jesus. Because of Jesus Ministries is your resource for grace-filled, Jesus-focused Bible studies and curriculum for all ages. Adult Bible studies, books, devotionals for girls and teens, DVDs, CDs, and MP3s. We offer group Bible study packages as well. Connect with us and check out our many free resources online at ConnieWitter.com, where Bible studies are always in the light of Jesus.